that time then, right now. For you to turn. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. So please turn. Amen, amen, amen. Well, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Thankful for another wonderful opportunity to be here, to be able to discuss the wonderful truths of what it is that Jesus Christ has provided for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. All that is promised to us through what it is that he has done. Uh, that's our heart's goal here. And again, that's uh, what we intend to do here at Word Promise Ministries is to take the promise of what Jesus Christ has done and provided and proclaim it. First receive it for ourselves and then proclaim it to others that others may hear and receive this wonderful gospel message of what Jesus Christ has done. And we always talk about the fact that we cannot talk about the promises of God without talking about how they are received, which is by faith by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and faith in what it is that he has done and provided for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. And so we've been on this series where we've been talking about faith for a little while now. And one of the questions that we ask is, when does faith come to an individual? When does faith come to a person? And we said uh, that when a heart that acknowledges the sense of judgment and condemnation for the sins they can't fix meets up with the gospel of what Jesus accomplished through his death, burial, and resurrection for mankind's problem with sin, true faith will be birthed in that individual by which God can accomplish everything he sent Jesus to accomplish. And again, we mentioned that when those two things meet up, when a heart acknowledges the judgment and condemnation, the fact that they sin and they try to fix their sin problem and they can't fix it and they feel this guilt and this condemnation and this sense of judgment from God as a result of, of their failure to accomplish these things. But when that heart acknowledges that and stops suppressing that and stop acting as if that's not true, that that's not truly there, and when a heart acknowledges that and that heart meets up with the gospel of what Jesus has done and provided and made available to solve all of those problems that mankind knows on the inside of them. That is when that seed can be planted into that heart and faith can be birthed on the inside of that heart. I've mentioned on many occasions, I can tell a person the good news of what Jesus has done and accomplished and provided all day, but if they never acknowledge the truth of their issue, the issue that they face, the, the fact that they can't fix themselves, the fact that they are a sinner, the fact that what they're doing is against God and they've tried to fix it and it doesn't work. If they refuse to acknowledge that, I can tell them all day. And they really won't, won't again do anything. They really won't again uh, be truly planted in that heart for faith to come to pass. And so we ask that question, when does faith come? And we also ask the question of what is faith? What is faith? And we looked over in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, where it says this. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. So he defines faith in this scripture here. And we broke this down into two uh, phrases. In one, we said that faith is a strong foundational confidence for the things a person earnestly expects to come to pass because of what Jesus accomplished for them through his death, burial, and resurrection. And that's that first half of this scripture where it talks about faith being the substance of things hoped for. It is this strong foundational confidence, again, on the inside of a person where that, that has them at a place where they earnestly expect to, uh, uh, um, uh, to come to pass the things, again, that Jesus accomplished for them through his death, burial, and resurrection. It's this strong foundational confidence on the deep down inside of us. And also the second half of this talks about uh, it is the evidence of things not seen. And what we said is that faith is this convicting evidence in the heart of things that God has made available through Jesus Christ, 
yet they are unseen. We've mentioned on many occasions that the things that Jesus has made available are unseen. We didn't see Jesus, uh, again, live the perfect life. We didn't see Jesus, again, die on the cross, be uh, hit with the had a nine, nine tails, I think that's what it's called. We didn't see again God say, I accept that. We didn't see that with our physical eyes or hear that with our physical ears. We didn't see him being raised from the dead and sitting at the right hand of God. We saw none of these things with our physical eyes. But what faith is, faith is just convicting evidence in the heart that this is true. That as if I have seen this. It, it from my heart standpoint and that's what again faith is and we talked about again with it being this strong foundational confidence and this convicting evidence again it is a need of we are in need of the help of the Holy Spirit for this to come to pass this isn't something we can just make ourselves do we can't make ourselves again believe this we need that help from the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to bring us to the place where we have this strong foundational confidence and this convicting evidence. And so we talked about that when we, as we again, and another thing just to mention with this as well, we've, we've talked about on many occasions that this faith is something that is an ongoing development. So grow, this is continuing to grow, continuing to grow. And it's, and again, if we go back to this, what we said over here, this heart acknowledging the sense of judgment and condemnation for the sins uh, um, that they can't fix. Well, that even that is a growth. That is a development. That is a more and more allowing within my heart to acknowledge that truth, to acknowledge that truth. And in the same way, when we talk about that faith comes when it, that heart meets up with the gospel. Well, again, we don't know all of what the gospel entails when we first get saved and first come to faith. But what happens? A growing and developing, a knowing more and more of what it is that Jesus Christ has done and provided. So again, as I say these things, I want to continue to emphasize that this is a growing, a developing, a ever uh, uh, continuing to learn more and more of what it is that Jesus Christ has done. And at the same time, a continuing allowing of the truth of, of me and my insufficiency, my inability, the guilt and the condemnation that I, I knew beforehand, that I, I, I was facing, that I kind of tried to ignore. Well, it's a more and more as I hear this gospel and learn of this gospel and the Holy Spirit, again, ministers to my heart through it. It's a more of an, a, a, a truthful acknowledging of these things, of that guilt and condemnation that I face before. And so again, my point is that this is a growing, a learning, uh, a, a continual learning and a continual growing in faith. And so we mentioned as well that as this faith comes, there are three types of works that are connected to this faith that the Bible speaks of, three types of works. And we said, number one, these are the works that are in opposition to faith. We mentioned this one on many occasions and at the same time we've gone through in that portion of the series where we talked about these works and these are the works that a person attempts to do in order to gain what God has already promised in Jesus Christ. They're trying to work for Something that God is saying, no, I said, if you trusted my son, that he has already provided these things. Again, that is these works then that cause us to be in opposition to faith. They reflect the fact that, okay, no, I trust more in my works than I trust or have faith in Jesus Christ. And so we talked about that. We talked about number two, which are the works that are corresponding actions or responses to, uh, excuse me, or responses that reflect our faith or what we believe. And again, these are the works of faith that James spoke of over in James chapter 2 and Hebrews 11 displayed where it talks about all these things that people did that it said by faith they did these things. It simply meant that these uh, actions were corresponded with what they believed. They believed something and they moved on the basis of what it was that they believed. And so we talked about number two, I feel, you know, pretty thoroughly 
uh, number two. And now we're on number three, where we're talking about these works that are a byproduct of God's power and his grace working in us when we live by faith. So there are going to be works that are going to be a byproduct of God's power in our lives and his grace in our lives as we live simply by faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what we've been talking about. Uh, um, we started last week within this, this um, portion of the series. And, and today, what I'm wanting to do is, is, do I want to say that yet? No, I don't. I'm going to hold off on saying that. So, again, as we talk about these works, again, uh, that are a byproduct of God's power and, and grace, we mentioned last week over in Ephesians chapter 2 that it says in verse 8 through 10, for by grace you have been saved through faith. So he said, we're saved by the grace that comes through faith. And he says, and that's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. He says, not of works. That's that number one works. He says, not of works, lest anyone should boast. He says in verse 10, he says, though, for we are his workmanship. Look what he says. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. This is number three, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And so he mentions here in Ephesians chapter two that there are going to be good works that are a byproduct of us being God's workmanship. God's, that word workmanship is something that is created. Mm -hmm. It's the Greek word poema where we get the word poem or something that is beautifully created. And he says, as a result of us being created in Christ Jesus, we are created in order to accomplish these good works that God has set beforehand, that, that God has, has, has set up to come to pass in our lives as a result of us being this this workmanship and this workmanship is the result of us being saved through faith by grace through faith so this workmanship of God that we become is done by his grace through faith and this is the same grace that causes us to be saved and so again he shows us that us being recreated in Christ Jesus is for these good works. And this recreated is by grace through faith. This, this recreating by God happens. Again, he says in verse 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And again, in this whole context, he's talking about them, us being saved by grace through faith. And in this saving by God, we become this creation in him in Jesus Christ and as we become this new creation in him we are created in order to accomplish these good works that God has set in place that God has uh, prepared beforehand that we should walk in them and so again we talked about that aspect of these good works coming to pass is shown here by grace by grace and then look at what it says over here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7 and 8 uh, it says here it says and this is a, uh, Paul speaking to these Corinthians about their good work of giving for the purpose of benefiting this particular church that was struggling not well, struggling but they were uh, um, they were they were in poverty they were having real issues and this church again decided to to again come up with an offering to be able to bless mm -hmm. this other church with and so look at what he says he says so let each one gives as he purposes in his heart uh, not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver now watch this in verse 8 he says and God is able look at what is God able to do to make all grace abound all grace abound towards you. Why does this grace need to abound toward you? That you always having sufficiency in all things. Why do you need to have all sufficiency in all things? So that you may have an abundance of, for every good work. For every good work. So notice what he says. God is going to make his grace abound in your lives. As this grace abounds in your life, that's going to be a sufficiency 
on the inside of you, a sufficiency towards you, and that sufficiency towards you is going to cause you to have an abundance, a necessary abundance for every good works. Mm -hmm. So what does that show us in this scripture? That God's about, that these works, these Every good work, the same good work he said that I have set in place beforehand for you to walk in as you become my new creation by grace. Well, he says that as he makes his grace abound in your life, you're going to have a sufficient amount necessary to accomplish these good works. So again, it shows us that this grace is necessary for the good works that God has prepared before him. Not the good works that I may think I want to do or I need to do, but the good works that God has prepared beforehand. There is a need for the abundance of his grace mm -hmm. so that I can have, so I can be sufficient or have a sufficiency to be able to perform these good works. Again, it shows us that these good works are a byproduct of God's grace abounding in our lives and so as we just look back at this scripture once again notice again back over here in Ephesians chapter 2 where it says for by grace you have been saved through faith so we we talked about that this recreation in God for good works comes by grace through faith right mm -hmm. that that's the, the the foundation it comes through grace by grace and it comes through faith well look over here in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 where it says here this is Peter speaking he says Simon Peter a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. So this is Peter speaking to the church who are saved. He's a saved individual. He said, who have obtained like precious faith. Look at what he says, though. He says in verse 2, he said, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Doesn't that sound similar to it abounding in your life? If it is multiplied to you, grace and peace be multiplied to you, but in what? In the knowledge, in the knowledge of God mm -hmm. and of Jesus our Lord. He says here, this same grace that comes through faith is going to, again, be multiplied in your life in the knowledge of God. Now that word in, y'all have heard me say this many, many times, is the same Greek word as by. It's the same Greek word as by. So it could have been translated, multiplied to you by the knowledge of Jesus Christ, excuse me, of God and of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so what I'm wanting to show here and even talk about today is the fact that these good works that we're going to talk about that come by grace again, that come at, and that grace comes through faith is also a result of the knowledge of God. And so that shows that there has to be a connection with faith and the knowledge of God. Amen. There has to be a connection between faith and the knowledge of God. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Good works of God, faith to knowledge. Faith to knowledge. And the reason why I say faith to knowledge and what we're gonna show is even if, when we go back, matter of fact, Looking at this next, uh, if we go back to here, notice what he said that they have. They have this like precious faith. And so he says again, and what we're going to show as well, that this like precious faith is already there for these saved individuals. But the knowledge of God, again, has to be developed has to grow. And so that's why I said that it is faith to knowledge, meaning knowledge comes after faith. Knowledge comes after faith. And we're going to show that uh, in this next scripture. And again, now, now let me just say this. Now, what am, I, what am I connecting? Let's just look at the self point. What do we say? We said that this good work of God, this good works that are going to uh, are a byproduct of what God's grace and his power, right? About, uh, yeah, by his grace and his power. They're the result of that. And so that grace, it shows here, is multiplied in our lives by knowledge. And then faith comes before that. 
So again, we're showing this what? Domino effect. This mm -hmm. domino effect that where it starts with faith and it ends with good works. We know grace is in the middle somewhere and we know knowledge is in the middle and we know knowledge is even before grace. We're going to talk about that. Uh, but again, we're, sh we're going to show the domino effect. And what I just want to do today is out because with this domino effect that we're going to look at today, it is so many dominoes. I'm just going to give an overview of the whole thing. And then as we go along in this series, we're going to do it a little bit by little bit. All right. And go ahead, sir. I just, um, like to say this. It's necessary to have this faith in God. Mm -hmm. I'll say that if you line up two people mm -hmm. going through the same situation, mm -hmm. going through trouble or what have you, the difference between one who have, have faith in God My and man. one who don't, My what man. have you, um, their mentality. My God. See you out there. Go. In regards to the situation, mm. they could be both going through the same thing. Man, what man. Because now I see why Paul said grace and peace be multiplied. Mm, 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 because mm. you could have two people go through the same thing, mm, but mm. one has more grace and more peace. Oh my goodness. He so has the Christ abiding in him. Oh, oh my uh, 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 Basically, um, the Lord get that individual to accept his oh, condition or what have you oh, because he know that he ain't it by himself. Oh my and see, <laughs> see you skipping ahead. <laughs> oh you skipping ahead. But that is again so so true. Mm -hmm. Cause when we talk about what knowledge is, oh my see I'm, I'm not even gonna skip. We're gonna we gonna get that. I'm not even gonna skip that. But that is but that is so true. And then at the same time, just like you said, the grace of God, the peace of God, where you say in whatever situation they come, again, where in most cases does it, it seem like there's a difference between the two people. It's the outlook, the understanding, the view. That's right. That's what knowledge is. Okay, y'all got me scared. Y'all got me scared. I'm, I'm gonna get, we're going to get down. That's, we're going we gonna to get there in a second. But again, because in that case, what, that peace of God. Yes can work on the inside yes. of them regardless of what situation because they have a certain understanding yes. working in them. They yes. see differently. Amen. Oh yes. my. <laughs> and that seeing differently is stemmed from what is here? Y'all got me skipping. What's in here as truth? That's right. That's is it the right. gospel of what Jesus Christ has done, what he's provided that has now started to renew my mind and cause me to see differently, which then has me at a place of peace? Y'all got me scared. Y'all just can't hold out. Y'all can't hold out. But, but man, but it, is it, it, and that's what, again, oh man, that's what causes that grace. Because that peace is grace. Yes. That's his peace yes. on the inside yes. of us yes. working. And, and again, causing us to be long-suffering. That's a grace. That's, a, again, that's working in it. But y'all got me skipping. Y'all got me skipping. So we go, but that's, that's. I ain't got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. But man, but again, that's what I, again, want us to see with this scripture here. He says this grace and peace is going to be multiplied yes. to us. In or by the knowledge of God That's right. that is working That's on the right. inside of us. That grace, That's again, right. that comes through faith is going to be multiplied in our lives as we allow, again, what we believe to cause us to, to renew our minds, to see differently, That's to right. see things differently. That's oh, my. But look at what, it, again, it says. That's why I want I wanted to show here the fact that, again, this faith, uh, um, again, uh, it's, it, or this knowledge is to be developed. Look at what it says over in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 through 13 and we've talked about this before and it says here and he himself, speaking of Jesus gave some to be apostles some prophets, mm -hmm. some evangel evangelists and some pastors and teachers. He says look at the purpose for the equipping mm -hmm. of the saints. For what? The work of ministry. Wouldn't that be the good work that God prepared beforehand? The work of ministry. So he says he sent these individuals, again, for the equipping of the saints with what they need 
so that they can operate in the work of ministry or the good work that God has prepared beforehand. Look what it says. For the edifying of the body of Christ, he says, again, this is what the purpose of these individuals are for. Uh, it says, till all we all come to what? To the unity that is of the faith and to what? The knowledge of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And he says, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature yes. of the fullness of Christ. So notice what he says. These individuals, again, uh, um, uh, these ministers of these, uh, again, particular roles uh, that people play is for the equipping of the saints to bring people to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God. Again, showing, I'm going to come right to you, that this knowledge is developed. Yes. On the inside of us. It's yes. not something we just have. Yes. Again, just like with faith, you have it and then it develops. Knowledge, again, as you have faith, again, this knowledge develops. Right. This knowledge right. develops. Go ahead, right. sir. Right. Um, so when you say that Paul is more or less saying that, you know, even though you may have faith, uh, those um, attributes is usually the outcome. Which one is the outcome of? Uh, of the, once you have faith in the Lord, uh -huh. what have you, because I can't see from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, 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 what you have spoken concerning that, that, mm -hmm. that, that, that's what one develops. That should be yes. the outcome. Yeah, and the faith is the foundation. Exactly. Yes. As, that, as, uh, uh, exactly. So that should be the outcome. Oh, my. To let you know, hey, your faith is working good. Oh, my. And, and see, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It is again. Faith is the foundation. Mm -hmm. And then as a result of that, the the uh, he shows here that the prophets, the apostles, the pastors, yeah. the teachers, yeah. the evangelists, again, they equip the saints mm -hmm. so that they come to the knowledge right. of the Son of God, to right. that perfect man, right. uh, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, where all of the body of Christ, again, has the unity of the faith and, mm -hmm. and has this knowledge of the Son of God. So again, my point with that is just like what you just said, that that knowledge is, again, a byproduct of that faith. And there's something that takes place with a person who has faith mm -hmm. that causes them to come to the knowledge mm -hmm. of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Again, or the knowledge of God. Again, the knowledge of the Son of God, the knowledge of God, same thing. All these are syn uh, synonymous terms. Mm -hmm. Again, in some places he'll say the knowledge of God. In some places he'll say the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the knowledge of the Son of God. But it's all the same thing. Again, but this knowledge is a byproduct of yeah. that development of faith. Right. That de as I live by faith in Jesus Christ, and that is developed it again begins to form and renew my mind again, as we talked said earlier, into the knowledge of God or the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Mm. And so let's look over here in Ephesians chapter one, where he said this to them in the beginning of this same chapter, where he just said what he said over in Ephesians chapter four. Again, because what, what are we showing? We've already shown that this faith, again, faith in Jesus Christ, that the grace of God comes through again, God is going to be able to renew us, change us in a way where we are prepared for every good work by his grace. Well, we talked about the fact that in the middle somewhere, we found out the knowledge of God is. And this knowledge of God causes that grace to be multiplied in our lives again so that we can operate in the good work that God has called us to, showing that this again is a domino effect. This is a, again, and it starts with faith. It ends with the every good work, it starts with faith, and you have all these other things in the middle, all these other different things. And so, as we look over here in Ephesians chapter one, verse 15, it says, therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love for all the saints. So who is Paul speaking to? Unbelievers or believers? Believers. believers that he said, I've heard of your faith. So what? You believe right. Right. I heard you believe. Now watch this now. He says, I do not cease to give thanks for you and make mention of you in my prayer. So I'm praying for you. What am I praying for you about? He says, this is my prayer. Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory 
may give to you, look what he says, a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Look what he says, in the knowledge of him. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. the knowledge of him. He says, look at this in verse uh, 18. He says, what's the result of you having this spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him? The eyes of your understanding yes. being enlightened are going to be enlightened. And then what's the result of that? He says, that you may know or have the knowledge of. Yes. Oh, my. Yes. That you may know. What are you, what, what you going to know? You're going to know what is the hope of his calling. You're going to know what are the riches of, his, of the glory of his inheritance in the saint. Verse 19. And you're going to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Mm -hmm. And again, so he shows us here, Paul says, I heard about these individuals that have come to faith in Jesus Christ. And this is what my prayer to God is, is that he'll give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation that causes the knowledge of God to be formed on the inside of them. And he said, this spirit of wisdom and revelation is going to first open up the eyes of their understanding, which then is going to allow that knowing or that where they're going to know or have the knowledge of God formed on the inside of them. And these particular knowings are all examples of the knowledge of God or the knowledge of Jesus Christ. To know what is the hope of his calling is to, is a form of, or it falls under the umbrella of the knowledge of God. To know the hope of his calling. To know what is the what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance. That is a knowledge of God or falls on the, under the umbrella of the knowledge of God or knowledge of Jesus Christ. To know what is the exceeding greatness of his power is falls under the umbrella of the knowledge of God or the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so what he shows here, and again, all of these are dominoes that we're going to cover. I'm just doing an overview now. But we're going to cover all these dominoes because if you notice, and most of the Bible reads like this, it'll say this leads to this, which leads to this, which leads to this, which leads to this. Well, he's saying here, well, I'm praying that you receive this spirit of wisdom and revelation and, uh, uh, and, and in the knowledge of him. What's that going to lead to? It's going to lead to your, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. What is that going to lead to? It's going to lead to you knowing or having the knowledge of God formed in you. Well, what is that knowledge of God going to lead to? That knowledge of God is going to lead to God's grace being multiplied in your life and you being prepared for every good work. All of that is domino, are dominoes that we're going to cover that I'm just doing an overview of now. But these are examples of that. And remember, it all started with faith. That's the domino. The, the first one is faith. And then what? notice what he says, though. When that faith is there, I'm praying that God gives you a spirit of two things, wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation that as you have this spirit of wisdom and revelation, he say, and that leads to the knowledge of God. And so as you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and as you and I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit, but I'll go ahead and say it. But as you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and then now you have this spirit where now the wisdom of God can be poured into that heart that has faith and the revelation of God can be poured into that heart that has faith. What can now develop on the inside? The knowledge. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to show how all that connects. But let me just say this because again, we're going to, this is just an overview. So I'm, I, I'm not able, but you, do y'all see how much it is in, on the It's like looking on the inside under a car and trying to figure out how this connects to this and does all this. All we know is what? Hit the gas and go. And go. That's, and, and honestly, all these things that I'm saying, you don't have to understand all this for it to work. But it's good to have the understanding of how it works. Because mm -hmm. all, all he said, again, is, is that if you just trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and I'm skipping ahead, but if you allow that wisdom of who, uh, wisdom and revelation to be formed into your heart, all the rest of it works. All the rest of it. But we'll, we'll get into that. But it's good to know, to get under the hood and see how all of that kind of works. 
And so, again, we've broken down in other series where we talked about what revelation is, what wisdom is, and what knowledge is. We said revelation is my heart being made aware of who Christ truly has become for me. When I first get saved, I don't know all of that. I know he died for my sins. That's what I know, and I trust in that. But now, as I allow the truth of who he came to be, for me to be as that is revealed to my heart by the Holy Spirit as that takes place again that is my heart receiving revelation that's revelation being uh, again poured into my heart well wisdom wisdom then is the application to my life of who Christ is now revealed to me as it's now that I understand he is this what does that mean for my life. Mm -hmm. How does that affect this? How does that affect my, uh, again, relationship with God? How, how, what, what purpose did God send Jesus to be that for, for me? Again, it's just like, uh, just to give a quick example, just like when, uh, um, uh, again, as I first get saved, I know he died for my sins. I know that much. I trust in him. Now I, I come to, to learn and have imparted into my, my heart and life that he is my righteousness. Uh, that Why did God choose for him to be my righteousness? Well, again, because he know I can't get myself together. So that's, that's God with God's wisdom. God said, I know they can't get themselves together, so I set Jesus to be mm -hmm. their righteousness. I set it up to where they don't work for it, but they just believe. Okay, why did he choose to go that route? Because he knows that if I try to work for it, and, and, and um, that I'll never be able to accomplish it, that I'll operate in this cycle right. of bondage and guilt and condemnation and, and then trying harder and then failing more and then feeling more guilty and then trying harder and then failing more and feeling more guilty. He knows I'll operate in that cycle if I continue to try to work for it. See that? So in God's wisdom, he said, how I'm going to set it up again is by making it all about what Jesus has done and what he's accomplished. Well, when I have that wisdom imparted into my heart now it's going to cause me to start to look at oh let's see i'm skipping to the knowledge part but it's going to start to be now formed in my heart to now start to affect how i see now because i see god i don't see god as someone who's telling me i gotta get this together i gotta fix this i gotta get this right my outlook is starting to be changed now by this wisdom of God where mm -hmm. God said, no, I set it up this way for Jesus because I knew you couldn't do it yourself. Again, when we get to it, I'll be able to explain it a lot more thoroughly and I'll have better examples uh, than, than the one I get, gave. But that's what wisdom is. Wisdom ultimately is the understanding of why a person did what they did. Why God mm -hmm. did what he did. Mm -hmm. That's ultimately what wisdom is. Just a short answer. Why God did what he did. Why he released us from the law. Why he sent the law in the first place. Why, again, that he sent Jesus at the time that he sent Jesus. You know, all of these different things were done out of God's wisdom. Yeah. And as we understand that and have his wisdom working in us, we'll be able to, again, have a particular understanding and view of things um, the way God wants us to view them. And w which is ultimately what knowledge is. And I said knowledge is the understanding slash view of life, of myself, of people, of God, etc. That I have as a result of Christ being revealed in me. That's revelation. And God's purpose for Christ being who he sent him to be revealed in me as well. Knowledge is this understanding that is formed on the inside of me. Again, through those, again, two different things. When I trust in Christ and I have him now revealed in me as who he came to be. And I have the purpose now, which is wisdom. The purpose of why God sent him to be who he sent him to be working in me as well. Well, all of that now is going to renew my mind and cause me to start to see differently. Right. Which, which is ultimately me having the knowledge of God or the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And again, we're going to cover 
all of these things more thoroughly as we go along. But again, these are the examples of some of the knowledge of God or the knowledge of Jesus Christ. One of them is what? The not knowing the fellowship of Christ's suffering. That's, that's part of that knowledge of Jesus Christ is knowing the fellowship of his suffering that is spoke of over in Philippians chapter 3 verse 8 where Paul said I have this understanding now that all that I can do in and of myself is filthy not filthy rags but what does he use is, is manure is dung in his sight that's him having what the Bible called in Philippians chapter 3 verse 8 and 10 that's him having the knowledge of knowing the fellowship of Christ's suffering that was him suffering with Christ and having this understanding where now he saw everything that he could do in and of himself as nothing. Now, does everybody see it that way? No. Well, how did Paul get to that place of seeing that? Well, when he had who Christ had become for him revealed to his heart and had the purpose for which Christ came to be who he came to be revealed to his heart, his heart it caused Paul to start to look at all that he could do in and of himself and see it for the useless manure that it was. His mindset changed. It was renewed to see differently. You got yes, something? Yes, uh, I got a question. Uh -huh. it, it, it occurred to me. Now, is it good for the person to believe in the God or Jesus Christ and the finished works of the cross? Hmm. Or have you? Because you have to you, you can have God without the finished tricks of the course. Mm, you can have mm. the finished tricks of the course and have God. Mm, mm, mm. Or what have you. And, and, and go ahead. That's, that's the thing. That's an excellent I, question. I've just been wondering. Mm -hmm. what and, and what it is is, is, is faith in God for what he provided through Jesus. That's what Jesus would say. It was because God was the one who orchestrated the whole thing of what Jesus did. And so God is saying, I have put into motion this plan through sending my son. You trust in me and what I have provided for you in this plan. But again, and that's why that's would be considered faith in God. But it's faith in Jesus at the same time because what are you doing? You're trusting in the one who carries out that plan which is the Son, Jesus Christ. So it's, it's believing in both of them at the same time. Go ahead. It, 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 exactly. Of course, and that is, um, I would think, you know, you have a lot of people believing in their God. Oh, I know exactly where you're going. Yeah. What have you. Mm -hmm. And so I would think it's more or less believing in God. Mm -hmm. Who sent his son, mm -hmm. but even in the finished works of it, mm -hmm. that belief has to be there. Even though I don't understand it, mm -hmm. why he did it, mm -hmm. but yet I accepted and received that mm -hmm. he did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and 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 again, and I, I again because if people simply say they believe in God, they're believing in God according to their imagination of who right. they think he is. Right. God says, right. "I have described who I am by sending my Son uh, exactly. to show you again uh, exactly. who I am. I am a God that has provided salvation, has provided grace, uh, has exactly. provided power." All in the works of what my son has done. So if you believe in him, you believe in me. But if you just say you just believe in God according yeah. to just your imagination of what you just want him to be, that's right. not true faith in God. That's just right. faith in your imagination. Right. And so it's really faith in, it has to be faith in God according to what he provided in his son, Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense because like I said, you had, you had a lot of people. Oh, I oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. What have you? Mm -hmm. you know, they, they believe in their imagination. The Bible, they say nothing about the finished tricks of the world. Exactly. Right? Which one must have to believe that Absolutely. in order to be saved. Absolutely. And they talked about that there's a God of this world. That's right. And that's, that's what's right. most, uh, not most, but that's what mm -hmm. people who say things like that, that's what they believe in. They That's believe right. in the God of this world, the God of their imagination, the God that is according to the system of this yeah. world. That's they believe right. in that, that what their imagination tells them, what the enemy ultimately leads them down the road of right. believing. But again, believing in God in truth 
is believing in him according to what mm -hmm. he sent his son to do. Anything right. outside right. of that is just imagination. It has to be according to what it is that he's done that is true faith. That's the only faith that, again, the grace of God is going to come through that saves, that empowers, that changes, right. that renews. That's the only faith is that faith in God according to what he sent his son Jesus mm -hmm. to accomplish. And so, again, we talked about uh, these different types of knowledge being developed as revelation and as wisdom is imparted into the heart that That's believes right. in God according to Jesus Christ. The heart that believes in Jesus according to Jesus Christ, when it has revelation and wisdom imparted into it, it starts to cause the knowing of the fellowship of, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, of uh, the suffering right. of Christ, knowing the power of Christ's resurrection uh, again, that's Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. Knowing the riches of the glory of his inheritance. We read this one in the saints. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. Knowing the hope of God's calling. Ephesians chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 18. Knowing the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. That's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. Knowing, uh, the, having the knowledge of his will. Colossians chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 9. All of these are again understandings that people have it's not i just know information this is because my eyes have been enlightened and i see mm -hmm. things differently and i have now this understanding working in me where again uh this particular understanding causes me to see myself differently again just like before paul could have saw himself not as one who saw all that he could do as done he said these things were gained to me at first he said, this stuff that I thought it made me something in the sight of God and in the sight of people. But now, as a result of the revelation of who Christ is and the wisdom of God being pointed into my heart, who believes, now I see all of that as done. Mm -hmm. I see it as manure. And that's important to have that knowledge. Why? Because, again, through this knowledge, God's power, God's grace is going to be multiplied. And we're going to see how all that connects as we go along in the series but again even when it comes to the knowledge of his will which if we go over there real quick to Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 it says this and we used a little bit of this scripture last week we just looked at verse 10 last week but look what it says in verse 9 it says for this reason this is Paul again he says, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. When we, we're going to do a series on prayer. Do you see what the majority of what his prayers are about? about exactly. And others and their development, mm -hmm. their growth. Uh -huh. Because notice what he says here. He says, we do not cease to, to pray for you and to ask, ask what? That you may be faithful. Filled with the knowledge of his will. Again, this isn't just having information of what God's will is. This is you seeing the way God sees where now you want what God wants. Oh, man, we're going to talk about that at some point. Because even when we, we talk about the scripture that, that we're going to get to eventually, where it talks about working out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will. Well, how does God work in you to will? By bringing you to the knowledge of his will. Right. Where you right. want what he wants because you see as he sees. Yes. Oh my, yes. we're going we gonna to get that at some point. And all. Uh, but again, this is what Paul's prayer for them is. That you come to the knowledge of his will. Where you see as he sees and therefore you want what he wants. Again, he says that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. Look what he says though. In all wisdom. And all spiritual understanding. You're going to come to the knowledge of his will. Where you have this wisdom working on the inside of you. And this spiritual understanding. This spiritual understanding is that same understanding. Back over in Ephesians chapter 1. Where he says the eyes of your understanding are enlightened. Yeah. Enlightened yeah. understanding is spiritual understanding. Yeah. We, see we're going to cover all that I'm I know I'm going fast, but we're going to cover all of this a, a little bit by little bit. But I'm just trying to go through all of it now. But he says here that you may be filled with the 
knowledge of his will in all wisdom and in all spiritual understanding. Look what he says. And the result of that is that you may walk worthy of the Lord. So as a result of you having the knowledge of his will, this spiritual understanding and this wisdom working in you, you're going to walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, yes. and you're going to be fruitful yes. in every yes. good work. As a result, though, of the knowledge of his will being working in you, this wisdom and this spiritual understanding. You're going to be fruitful in every good work and you're going to be increasing in the knowledge of God or increasing again. That word in is what? By. Increasing by the knowledge of God. Because again, this knowledge of his will is his knowledge as well. Yes. It's the knowledge of God. And so as this develops in you, you're going to in be increasing and be you're going to be fruitful in every good work. Again, showing y'all that this knowledge is important in regard to coming to the place of these good works coming to pass. And again, as I mentioned before, these good works, I mean, this knowledge, again, is in the middle somewhere of faith on this side and good works on this side. And we're going to get into all of that. But again, Going back over here, and we're done, because like I said, we, uh, this is just supposed to be a real quick one, just to kind of do an overview. But in 2 Peter, going back over there, it says, matter of fact, uh, in uh, 1 through 3, it says, Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Notice again what he says in verse 2, this grace and peace is going to be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. Look what he says. And of Jesus our Lord. Notice what he says in verse 3. As. Whenever he says as in there, that means what? I'm continuing what I just previously said in the, in the previous statement. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through what though? The knowledge of him. Y'all see that? Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. So notice what he says in verse 2. The grace and peace is going to be multiplied in your life by this knowledge of God and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And then in verse 3, he breaks down what that grace is. It is the divine power of God. And he says this divine power is... It's gonna, it gives us everything that pertains to life and everything that pertains to godliness coming to pass in our lives. And it comes through the knowledge of God, through the knowledge of God. This power that is necessary for godliness to come to pass, because again, these good works are a byproduct of godliness. This is godliness coming to pass in our life. God-like action. That's what good, again, good works are. And, and again, so this godliness is a byproduct of God's knowledge. God's knowledge working on the inside of us. So as we close, again, we talked about the, as we look at the dominoes, we, the first domino is what? Faith in Jesus according to the gospel's presentation of him. Mm -hmm. That's the, the foundational thing person needs to believe in Jesus according to how the gospel presents him. Not just how I just want to believe he is, but according to the gospel. Number two, we receive that spirit of wisdom and revelation, which again, we're going to talk about it, but it is simply a posture in our hearts where, where now God's wisdom and revelation can now flow in, in, into our hearts. You have to have a particular posture in order for God by his spirit to release wisdom and release revelation. There has to be a posture and that posture, if I just go ahead and say it, it's just a, 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 a humility. It's all it is. It's that God gives grace to the humble. Again, it is a humility where I recognize I need 
what it is that Jesus Christ has done. Well, when I do that, the Holy Spirit will then reveal to me who Jesus Christ came to be. That it came to be for me. That's revelation. And he'll reveal to me this wisdom of why God chose to do what he did. So the posture or the spirit, that's what a spirit of, whenever you see like a, the people talk about like a spirit of homosexuality mm -hmm. or spirit of, 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 uh, of uh, uh, adultery, that simply means they have a certain posture that, that positions them to easily fall in that direct or move in that direction. Again, uh, a person can have a, a certain posture in their heart and in their thinking that, that makes them conducive, that's the word I wanna use, for homosexuality to take place or adultery to take place. Well, again, we need to have a posture or a, a uh, um, what was the word I used? Uh, I'm just saying, I can't remember. Uh, I'll just say posture. A posture in our hearts Humility. when, a uh, who? Why is that? Keep forgetting. Humility. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, that is the posture, but that a person needs to have a posture where now the wisdom and revelation uh, of who Christ is can now be imparted into our hearts. And that again is important because again, and we're going to talk about all of that, but that's why he said, after I heard of your faith, I'm praying you have this posture. I mean, you, it's possible you don't have that posture. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that posture, then you, you won't have the wisdom and revelation of who Christ is poured into your heart. And you won't have the eyes of your understanding enlightened. You'll be a Christian who's still walking in darkness. Ignorance of the truth. Well, why? Because you don't have a hum humility that allows the wisdom and revelation of Christ to be formed in you. But we're going we to get into all of that. So again, number two is we receive a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Again, which num leads to number three, which is the eyes of our understanding are going to be enlightened. And which leads to number four. The knowledge of God is formed in us where we start to see now differently, see as God sees. And then number five, the knowledge of God will trigger or triggers the unmerited favor or the grace of God's power in us. And that is ultimately what's going to lead to good works. All of this stems from right there. All this is just a byproduct. Now, this is something you have to try to uh, make happen. The only part is as I trust in Christ, if there's true humility there, all the rest is going to come to pass. And it's going to lead to that power of God working in my life that leads to every good work. Go ahead, sir. Now, uh, a lot of thoughts going on. <laughs> uh, now, let me mention something about the knowledge of the Lord. Um, even though the Bible says, it, it probably says it in a language where I have yet to understand mm -hmm. because, you know, I guess I'm receiving it according to my own intellect, but I know it goes beyond that sometimes. Um, now, I said knowledge of God, I can't see no man coming to the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. but I, you know, um, uh, uh, but yet, God knows man, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or not, because he had created him. But for the things of God, outside of that faith, no man can come to the uh, Absolutely. Or what have you. So, and that, it just lets me know that one must have, have, or he will, or they will obtain the knowledge of God once they have that faith. Uh, absolutely. And 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 then even in that, mm -hmm. is 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 faith having God move in and through you, mm -hmm. and you may not know the outcome, but He does. Yes, 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 absolutely. So so so, uh, yeah, I see it's more or less of a language I have yet to understand. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the knowledge of God, coming mm -hmm. to the knowledge. Of God. And 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 it's, and again, to, to, to skip ahead a little bit because we're gonna get over, we're gonna cover all of okay. that. Um, but even when it says no one knows the things of God That's right. except the Spirit yes. of God, but yes. it says, but we have received the Spirit That's that we right. may know the things that God has prepared yes. 
for us. And again, so it takes the spirit of God yes. to reveal yes. and show us and bring us to that place yes. of knowledge. And that's why I say he does that through when a person has a, received a spirit of wisdom and revelation, which is what they have this posture of humility where they recognize the insufficiency of them and they look to Christ. That is when the Holy Spirit is going to reveal that. Go ahead. Well, one thing, because uh, like I was reading this scripture in Luke, but you know when they say that um, Jesus spoke to the masses, uh, but I see that when he particularly, it says that he turned to the disciples and told them, and mm -hmm. it's not like he was addressing the people, mm -hmm. but he was addressing those who oh, was his. See? Oh, oh I like that's but exactly he said right. that you, um, 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 what it says, it has said been old, eye for an eye, what happened? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He said, but he said, I say to you, mm -hmm. and he wasn't talking to the yes, exactly multitude, right. he mm -hmm. was talking to his disciples. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. said, when they, uh, 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 um, he said, love them that curse you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's saying things that man cannot do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But those disciples who are his. Yeah, yeah. And his, uh, you, you know, only in him can they do these things. Oh, my. And, and that is so important because that is so true. Just like it, it said, it, it, he reveals it to those that belong right. to him. Yes. It, it, even uh, like you said, Jesus said that it's for you to know the things right. of the kingdom. That's right. Again, That's they don't know. Right. Again, exactly. but it is for you to know. And so again, and uh, how he does it again is as we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to cover all of this. Mm -hmm. Again, we have this posture of humility that allows That's his right. wisdom and revelation by the spirit of God to flow in our hearts. It's going to be a picture of our eyes are open. Yes. To see yes. now. To see yes. differently. To see again how God sees. Again, and it's a development. That's like I say with everything. Right. It's a development. We, right. that it, Paul said in one place, he said, anyone who thinks that they know ought to realize they don't know. Exactly. And, in other words, That's meaning right. what? It's you're forever growing and learning. You That's never right. come to the place where again, you mm -hmm. understand everything. That's and right. uh, And so, but, but, what he's saying is that that having that knowledge of him is again something you do possess, but you're growing in. You're learning more and more. You're having more and more wisdom and revelation poured into your heart and developing and, and allowing you to see and, and having enlightened eyes to truly see the way God wants you to see in all circumstances towards all people, towards yourself, towards God and so many different things. You, you have something? Um, yeah, so would you say that when the Lord mentioned, unless ye are born again, oh, my. but see. by the Spirit, <laughs> yeah. oh my God, uh, you go. so it you takes go. a, I would say it takes an aging process, Ooh, even man. in the Spirit, oh my God, because mm. things don't come overnight. Oh, it does not, man, and, and, oh, man, I can't wait, we, we may do a, a, a series, a series on, um, studying the Bible. Amen. I really want to do that because, again, and with, to show that, to, to, to help us understand, it's not just, okay, you read something, you pray, and then God going to give it to you. You just got it. No. Sometimes you'll read and then you'll read in another place and That's it'll give right. greater revelation to that place yes. that you were at before. And it's like a puzzle piece yes. that's being put together. Go ahead. I, absolutely, exactly. absolutely, exactly. and and so again, uh, so what it, it shows is that all of this, and that's what's so important to reiterate, that all of this is a developing, a yes. growing, a learning. None of these things don't don't see them. God sees them as complete and finished. Because right. why? Because at right. that, at the time that you're with Him, it's over. But that's right, right now, that's from the right. time of your salvation. To the time you leave this place, you are forever growing. That's right. You're forever That's learning. Right. You're forever coming right. to again. That faith is is, mm -hmm. is being increased and greater. The knowledge is being increased. The, the your the eyes of your understanding are being more and more enlightened. Even though it'll say in scripture, again, you 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 walk in the light, you can see, and all it'll say that, but again, at the same time, it acknowledges 
that that yes. seeing is developing, yes. is growing, is learning. And so again, but what I want to show here is that it is by domino effect mm -hmm. that this happens. Mm -hmm. Domino effect. And it all starts with faith. Yes. It's faith that ultimately leads to that knowledge that ultimately comes to the uh, point where the good works of God can come to pass in our lives. When that faith, again, is developing, being developed with revelation and wisdom, and then now the eyes of the understanding are enlightened, and now you have the knowledge of God formed in you. That power of God can now work and be multiplied in your life so that every good work can come to pass, so that the good works can manifest in our lives. And so we're going to, again, as we go along, we're going to do a little bit by a little bit. I just did a big overview, but we're going to try to do a little bit by a little bit and try to cover how all this works. And uh, so we're going to try to do it like that. Hey, Amen. Anybody got anything else before we get out of here, y'all? You got anything, babe? I, I just wanted to share um, Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible uh -huh. to please him. For he that cometh to God must, must believe that he That's is. Right. And that he is a rewarder mm. of them that diligently oh, seek him. My, my, my. And so, okay, I live by, I have two models that I live mm -hmm. by. My first model is practice the way you plan to mm -hmm. perform. Mm -hmm. And my second one is, it's all about perspective. Mm -hmm. And so, I always, I always understood that your faith is kind of like your currency mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. kingdom of God. You're not going to get anywhere mm -hmm. without that. Mm -hmm. And so now you're showing us under the hood mm -hmm. how important, I mean, what it really means that you're not going to get anywhere without faith. My because goodness. without that faith, you can't open up to receive anything from him. What, what is it? Through, by grace? Uh, no, through faith. By grace, through faith. By grace, through faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... He is his grace oh, my. that was given in the first place. Oh, now you have to have that faith oh, my to receive mm -hmm. it. And that's the beginning Absolutely. of your account oh, of my. all these promises oh, coming my. to pass. Oh my, that is so, so true. And we're going to again go under the hood and show all of how that connects. Amen. Mm -hmm. Lord, we bless yes. you. We praise you. We honor you and we thank you. We thank you for this time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this opportunity to be here. Thank you just for great revelation of, yes. of your truth, Lord. Thank you for opening up our eyes to see more and more of what it is your son has done and provided for us, oh Lord. We trust in you. We yes, look Lord. to you. We believe you, Lord, for what it is you provided. Now, oh Lord, do that great work on the inside of us, that you may be glorified, that you may be exalted, that people may see our light but glorify you because you are the one who is doing the great work on the inside of us. And so we thank you, Lord. We bless you. We pray for everyone here. We pray for everyone, again, that's listening online. Speak to all of our hearts. Allow us to see Jesus like never before. We thank you, bless you, praise you and honor you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. No matter time, you're right now. No matter time, you're now. For you to turn. For you to turn back to God. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. So please.